Soil Work have been longtime veterans of the heavy metal scene, getting their roots in the 1990s as part of the melodic death metal movement. And they have been a band that throughout the years has been willing to experiment a little bit with their sound, tweak it a bit to see if something brand new can harbor in a brand new age. Uh, but here in 2019, their brand new album entitled Verklechten, which means reality, shows soil work in a very strange state. Uh, the, as the name itself suggests, what is soil work's reality? Is this album truly representative of it? It's been four years since the last time we've heard from Soil Work, so a brand new album feels like it's a long time coming, principally because it is. Within their long career, they've never taken breaks any longer than three, so the extra year could potentially mean that they have spent meticulous time honing their craft in order to come back in a very big way. But is that what happened with Verglighton? Let's take a look. Uh, starting off with just an instrumental and going into Arrival, we do hear some differences in the sound, but they are very, very minute. There are trace little changes that you get with that traditional melodic death metal approach. Throughout most of the first half of this album, in fact, what you're going to be hearing are a lot of interwoven clean vocals that go alongside of the melodic death metal more growls that you will sometimes possess during these tracks. These clean sections are nice and everything like that. In fact, they are very well executed. Executed, uh, and they do lead to big choruses that seem to really feel a little bit larger than the song itself. The music itself also seems to bend and weave and move, but the big thing about it is, is that it bends, weaves, and moves pretty much in the same general place. There's not a lot of difference here that's really kind of the problem with Burke Lichten getting that out of the way early on is that this is an album that though it does have kinesis and does have quite a bit of motion and energy that's attached to it, it all hovers right around the same frequency and it doesn't really go outside the reservation too too frequently. What you will get from this album however, and this is especially seen throughout the middle portion of this disc, is a couple of twinges or nuances that may even uh, bend toward a little bit of melodic black metal where you hear some of these, uh, you know, sort of OG riffs that start to fuse uh, these songs together uh, with a little bit more of that darkened touch. There's a little bit more in the way of uh, minor key usage, either that or just a lot of thrust. And as a result, these aggressive songs do take on a little bit of an aggression, but at the same time, still hover around that same medium considering they have such a high presence of those clean vocals, which again, as I said, are extremely crisp, as you would expect from soil work. The thing that happens though whenever you reach the second part of this album is that you do get a little bit more of a variation, but by this point in time you're already kind of thinking, is it really going to come? It's one thing to, you know, make it through the first half of this disc and feel pretty decently about it, but the second half is where it starts to expand itself a little bit with a song such as Witten uh, starting to feel like maybe they're even traversing a little bit, you know, inching toward uh, somewhat of a power metal type uh, look or feel. Uh, Stalfagar is a duet that they do with Alyssa White Glutes, and this is one that feels kind of lackluster. Uh, to start off the second part of this disc, it's not really one that gets you very energized, but at the same time has a decent enough approach that's taken to it to give it at least a nice bit of girth. Uh, the Wolves Are Back in Town feel like it's nothing more than a real uh, sort of melodic death up. A, you know, update to the boys are back in town, which is a neat enough idea by itself, and it's really just in name alone, but at the same time, the song itself is not really that memorable, which is one of the big problems that this disc does have. What, you remi uh, what you're reminded of with this disc more so is those soaring choruses, so you do get a little bit of that addiction complex with those, where you start to become very dependent on hearing them in Soilworks material for it to feel complete. And as a result, you are going to have, you know, choruses and melodies to hum. However, whenever we get to the latter two songs on this disc, one of which features the lead singer from Amorphous, the song is entitled Needles and Kin, this is one of the standouts and one of the highlights, and not just because the vocalist duties are being shared by two individuals. It's instead one where it feels like the most complete track, and one that has a lot of, uh, you know, just great element to it. And when coming near the end of the disc, you want to have something that constitutes memory and gives a, a listener a reason to kind of step away from the disc thinking to themselves, damn, that was pretty awesome. Needles and Kin is able to accomplish that. Uh, you a Quiver, which features Dave Sheldon, is not quite able to encapsulate the same amount of 
uh, you know, real high praise, but at the same time is still pretty well done. It seems like whenever Soilwork gets a couple of their friends involved, uh, in these two cases at least, uh, the tracks feel extremely solid. But overall, one of the big problems that this disc possesses is that it does not take nearly enough of a risk in order to feel like uh, Soilwork has sort of uh, stayed true to their promise of really trying out a lot of new things. The band themselves said that the explorations were not necessarily to dive headlong into other genres, either that or not meant to really fracture the original core sound all of that much, but instead tweak the formula a bit. So, in reality, the band did stay true but the problem might be is that they may have wanted to go a little bit further with it. A lot of this still has that traditional soil work vibe, which is cool enough, but the music itself and the overall body of writing is just a little bit above average. It's not necessarily anything that's shock and awe or 30 out of 30 causing. In reality, this is an album that's more like an 18 out of 30 or a 19 out of 30. It's a decent enough effort, but it's one that I feel that, especially in a year with so many great albums expected to arrive, and especially with the way the metal landscape is right now, could quickly be forgotten about. And that's not something that you want, obviously, but, you know, Soil Work is such a big name that they are going to be just fine. I look forward to hearing what they're able to do next. I want to know what you guys think about this album. Tell me what you think about Verklechten by Soilwork. I no doubt have destroyed pronunciations once again because that's like a calling card. So I'm making like a t-shirt of that or something like that. T-shirts. What a novel idea. CKN merch is now available. There's a link down in the description box below for you to check that out. There is uh, a shirt and a pair of stickers that you can get currently. It's in its infancy stages. There will be more as time passes officially show your love of CKN by picking up some merch today. And if you do so, I thank you very much, so go get you some. But let me know what you think about the album. As before, I am Cover Killer Nation, and as forever, I will be Cover Killer Nation. And I will talk to you guys next time. Take care.